How's it going, everybody? Frank here with my brother Miguel again. Cigars and more in Bakersfield, California. Thank you for tuning in to this review for the Bakersfield gentleman. And today, Miguel, we're going to be taking a look at the Christoph Sumatra and Torpedo. Nice. It comes in at a little over six inches by a 52 ring gauge at its widest point. It has an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. It's almost a reddish brown color if you look at it closely. Really. Yeah, like dark, dark maroon almost. Yeah. yeah. Really, really nice looking wrapper. It has a Brazilian binder. It has Cuban seed, Ecuadorian, and Nicaraguan long filler. Nice. So you get a good uh, mixture of uh, countries in the cigar. Not too tightly packed either. There's a little springiness to it with a really great aroma. I can't It has it. a really great smell to it. Like when I want to smell a cigar, I like I hay. Go, what I like to describe to people, that's the smell I want them to get because that is just so pleasant. I think even the most advert to cigars mm -hmm. would smell that and think, you know what? Maybe I'll try it. So that's, that's a really big plus right there, just off the book. Now this is a cigar that I've enjoyed before and I actually really like the cigar a lot. I mm -hmm. um, actually got to smoke one with Glenn Case, who is the owner of Kristoff, uh, even before I knew who he was. <laughs> he was nice enough to talk to me for a while. And then I asked him who he was and he's like, oh, my name's Glenn. I was like, oh, so do you work for Kristoff? He's like, kind of. I was like, oh, what do you do? He's like, I run it, I own it. And I was like, well, all right then. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun night. That was a great night. So. I want to uh, thank Glenn for actually coming out to Bakersfield earlier this year and spending some time with us at our cigar event. And hopefully we can get him out here for the next one. Definitely. So let's go ahead and get these cut up, Mike, and we'll get started with the first third. All right, guys, so we're about 20 minutes in getting down to the uh, second third now. And as far as flavors go, uh, I think we both agreed. I'm getting that nuttiness, that cedar wood, and that really nice cinnamon spice coming in. It's not overpowering like that black pepper or the cayenne spice can get sometimes in other cigars, uh, but it's that nice kind of sweetness to that cinnamon that's coming in really nicely. Cinnamon is definitely the way I would describe it too. That's an excellent uh, point. I was also getting a little bit of a coffee flavor almost that um, really complements well with that, that particular spice. Right. Uh, yeah, very much enjoying that when I'm getting it though. Um, the problem I'm having is with the smoke output. It's pretty much non-existent for me, and I'm fighting that. And I don't care for uh, having to fight the smoke out, but um, kind of feel like I have to babysit it a bit. And um, that's the only issue I'm having right now. The construction itself is holding on pretty well. I did have to do one little retouch, but that's about it. Um, the ash is a little flaky, but again, not falling on my lap or on myself, as you can see. So not really an issue either. It's not known for being very heavy on the uh, output of the smoke. Uh, but you are getting a lot of flavors out of it, and it is one that you are going to have to kind of watch because it will go out if you uh, don't take care of it like you should. Um, but again, my burn is almost razor sharp. Yep. It is a little wavy to one side, but it's been self-correcting, so not a big issue. My ash is falling off in uh, solid, uh, about an inch chunks, so no complaints there. Fair. Draw, Fair the only, only drawback I would say would be the draw. It is a little tight. But I do find that happens more with the torpedo shapes or those um, tip shapes because all that tobacco is coming together at that point and it's kind of making it a little firmer uh, pack there. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that, but other I think that, some of them do it a little better. Yeah, but other than that, guys, no big, no big deal. It's still uh, performing very, very well. So we'll go ahead and we'll get into the next third, guys. We'll be back with you in just a minute uh, as soon as Nick is done ashing himself. No floor. Ah, uh, floor. Nothing. No tally Ooh. this time. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're about 50 minutes in, getting down to the uh, last third here. And uh, I have to say, I am getting some flavor changes in this thing. It has a nice transition uh, from that cinnamon, uh, cedar wood, and roasted nuts to uh, coffee and leather. I'm getting a nice bit of coffee and leather in there. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's a very pleasant transition so far from first to second, third. Hopefully it'll change again in this last third. Um, as far as mine goes, no issues with construction, no relights, no touch-ups. It's almost a razor sharp burn now. Smoke output is getting a little better. Uh, it's improved quite a bit. Again, that has nothing to do with the flavor. It's just, you know, kind of more of a, an appealing thing to some smokers. They like to see that heavier smoke. Uh, Mike, do I dare ask how yours is going? Not great. Not great. Um, that uh, smoke issue is still a problem because it's kept going out on me. Um, my first attempt was to give a little run through with this guy. <coughs> Excuse me, with this guy. I'm getting your smoke like directly in my Sorry. mouth. Sorry. I'm trying to talk here. And um, uh, to no avail, this didn't work either. So I was finally, everyone's like, hey, just cut it and try to relight it. And I did, and still nothing. Um, the flavors are gone because I've, I've got no smoke. You got no smoke, you got no flavors. Um, 
a little, little disappointed right now. And uh, I'm coughing so much that I've been trying to breathe in so deeply uh, to get something and it's just not working out for me. Uh, I might be ending this pretty early actually. Uh, not much else I can say. I just got a dead in the pack because as you can see, um, Frankie is just fine. No problems whatsoever. Absolutely perfect. Um, so I'm guessing this was just a, a fluke right here, this particular guy. It happens. Yeah, definitely. I mean, don't don't judge him by just one. Again, you have to smoke every cigar at least twice if you can three times to really uh, be able to get the full experience out of it. You know, uh, you might get a bad one in a batch. Uh, you might get one that was stored improperly, you know, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things that happens every great once in a while. So I'll go ahead and I'll finish out mine, guys. I think Mike's pretty much done with his for right now. We'll get back to the conclusion in just a minute. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine off there. I got about an inch or so to go. Probably get a few more minutes out of it if you do like a warmer smoke. Uh, but for me, I like to cut them off right about there, uh, which I mean, most people can tell if you've watched our reviews before. Um, the end burn time for me was a little over an hour and 30 minutes, uh, which is really great because I noticed from the first third to the second third, it went from uh, 20 to um, 50 minutes. So I got about a half an hour on the second third as opposed to 20 from the first, and I got about 40 minutes off of the last third. So for me, each third was kind of building it in, in time, which I thought was kind of unique and kind of cool. So it was, it was an overall really good burn time of an hour and a half. And the flavors uh, for the last third for me, um, they kind of mellowed out, and it just became that... Uh, really predominant cedarwood flavor with the aged tobacco. So you know that cinnamon, that nuttiness, um, the leather, all that really started to fade off towards that last third there. Uh, but again, the last third was just as enjoyable as the first third, just wanted so many flavors. Um, but sometimes that's, you know, that's what you like. You know, you don't want a bunch of muddled flavors. You want just, you know, a nice taste that you enjoy. Oh, sure. So, uh, no issue on, on construction at all. Uh, as you can tell, my ending burn was a little wavy, but it had been correcting itself and going from side to side. So. No real issue there. Smoke output did get a little heavier towards the end, which was really nice to see that it actually built up a little bit more. So the whole cigar, I think, for me, kind of just was building from beginning to end, which was kind of uh, nice to see. You know, just getting all that flavor or smoke at the beginning. Uh, other than that, guys, uh, definitely an enjoyable cigar. Definitely one from uh, the Christoph line that I've enjoyed more than once, and I will continue to enjoy more. So if you guys get a chance to come into cigars and want to try one out for yourselves, uh, maybe try one of the other ones. You know, the Cameroon, the Maduro. Uh, any of the, the line is really a great choice. Can't go wrong there, guys. Um, I'd pass it off to you, Mike, but I think we pretty much wrapped you up after the second third. Yeah, mine, mine did have some serious um, issues going on. But that's not going to stop me from trying this again. Because, again, um, any cigar that you would like to try, give it a few different tries. Um, certain situations can affect it. Um, your mood set can affect just the way you're, you're feeling about anything. And uh, in this in particular case, I think it was just this cigar that was a little defect. Because as you can clearly see, Frankie's was completely fine. Mm -hmm. um, if I pulled out another one, <coughs> excuse me, if I pulled out another one right now, I bet you that one will be okay too. Uh, just one fluke incident. Not a big deal, honestly, to me. Uh, and I, I do want to try another one. Because I've had Kristoff before. I love Kristoff cigars. So it's not going to deter me anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely give it more than one chance, guys. Again, you could just get one that happened to be a mistake in the batch, you know, just a single one. But again, you know, mine came from the same batch and it was perfect. So, yeah, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, well, for the Bakersfield Gentleman, myself and my brother Miguel, hope you guys enjoyed our review of the Kristoff Sumatra and Torpedo. And from here, uh, Cigars and More in Bakersfield, California. See you guys next time. Have a good one, guys.